In this brief video, I wanted to show how to um, solve boundary value problems using MATLAB, uh, specifically using the built-in BVP4C routine. Here's our sample problem, or we'll do two. Here's our first one. Y double prime plus Y is 1. So it's a second order linear ODE. Uh, our X will span from 0 to pi over 2. At the left edge, at x equals 0, we want y to be 1. At the right edge, at x equals pi over 2, we want x, uh, we want y to be 0. So y of 0 is 1, y of pi over 2 is 0. This built-in routine will handle both linear and nonlinear equations and um, of arbitrary order, as far as I know. So it will easily handle a linear second-order equation, and it will do much harder problems. Um, this is just a good way to demonstrate how it works. The inputs to this are three uh, functions essentially, two functions actually, and um, an initialization that I'll show you in a minute. So the ODE fun de um, defines the equation itself, the second order equation in our case. BC fun defines the boundary conditions. Uh, again, there's two in our case. And then Solinit provides a mesh, at least an initial, initial mesh. Uh, this routine is iterative, so um, it will adjust the mesh as needed. And also a guess for our solutions. Um, as it turns out, a guess for y as a function of x and dy dx as a function of x in our case. It needs this because for nonlinear problems, is, it has to do an iterative solution. For linear problems, it's not all that critical. So um, just like the initial value problem solvers, ODE45 and things like that, um, this routine, the BVP4C routine, is based on solving systems of first order ODE. So first thing we have to do is take our second order ODE, break it down to two first order ODEs. So here's our equation, y double prime plus y is 1. I in, uh, introduced a, a new variable z, which is dy dx. So I let dy dx be z. And now I have two variables I'm trying to solve for, y and z, as a function of x. I let y be um, our first variable, we call it y of 1, and dy dx, which is z, I call that our second variable, and I'll put it in a solution vector y of 2. So we'll actually have a solution vector, y of 1 being y, y of 2 being z. Um, so d our first first order equation is dy dx should be y of 2, and then d squared y dx squared is dz dx. And d squared y dx squared from up here is 1 minus y, or 1 minus y of 1. So our second first order equation is dz d, 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 dx is 1 minus y of 1. So we need this um, a, a routine that provides these two first derivatives as a function of y of 1 and y of 2. And that's put in down here. I call it BVP for ODE. You can call it whatever you want. The inputs to this are x and y. x, of course, is our independent variable. y is this vector of solutions for y of 1 and y of 2. So it sends a value, and we have to send back the first derivatives. dy dx is y of 2. So that's here. Um, dz dx is 1 minus y of 1. So that's here. So this defines our second order equation in terms of two first order equations. Then for boundary conditions, um, this routine uh, lets yA be a vector of solutions at our first point, x equals a, which in our case is 0, and yB be a vector of solutions at our second edge, which is the right edge, which is x equals b, or in our case, x equals pi over 2. So y a of 1 is y is, is the first variable at the left edge. y a of 2 is the second variable, or z in our case, at the left edge. y b of 1 is the first variable, or y at the right edge. y b of 2 is z at the right edge. So we need two uh, um, equations that define our boundary conditions at that point. The way this is set up is like root finding. So we provide two functions that should be 0 when the boundary conditions are met. So um, we have y of 1, um, y of 0 equals 1, uh, which means our first variable at x equals a should be 1, or y of 1 minus 1 should be 0 at x equals a, which is equivalent to being y a 
of 1, which is y at x equals 0, minus 1 should be 0 when this boundary condition is satisfied. Second one is that y of 1 should be 0 at x equals b, or yb of 1 should be 0. Uh, so we just put yb of 1 here. So when this vector is 0, 0, we've satisfied our boundary conditions. So we have to decide how many mesh points to start with. We'll start with 10 in this case. Um, we have to provide initial guesses for our um, both our dependent variables, y and z. I just guessed here y equals 1 and z equals minus 1. Uh, we have to set a, a minimum value of x and a maximum to define our, our region of interest. So this saw init calls a BVP init routine built into MATLAB using, in this case, a linear um, lin space, right? A, a, a vector which contains x values equally spaced from 0 to pi over 2, all right? And then we put in our initial guesses as a vector, all right? So this takes our mesh and our initial guesses, sends them to this BVB init, returns sol in it, and we'll send that to BVP4C. For post-processing, um, we again use a lin space, this time using the default of 100 points between 0 and pi over 2. We call this built-in deval routine, which evaluates the solution to uh, um, a boundary value problem at these points we defined here. And then we just plot the first uh, column of that, which is our y vector. So this will plot y versus x when BVP4C is done. So we put it all together. This is how it works. I've used embedded functions to embed these two routines. I just set up my x range. I call BVP for init. I call BVP for C. And then I do the post-processing as I just described. Here's our ODE definition routine. Here's our boundary condition definition routine. That's it. Um, if you're going to switch to another problem and you have a second order ODE, not much has to change. We have to change the minimum and maximum value of x. The guesses, you might use more points if you want to start out with. You have to change um, the definition of the equation and the boundary conditions. Everything else can stay the same and you'll get y versus x. Now what happens if we have um, a boundary condition involving a first derivative? Let's use a different model problem, y double prime plus y is 0. And our, our, excuse me, our boundary conditions are y of 0 equals 1 and dy dx now of 1 equals 0. So x goes from 0 to 1, and we have a 0 slope condition at the right. Again, we have to break this equation up into two first order equations. We let dy dx be z, or dy dx is y of 2. And then dz dx is a second derivative, which now is just minus y of 1. Our boundary conditions are here, y of 0 is 1, y prime of 1 is 0. So that's equivalent to ya of 1 minus 1 should be 0, and yb of 2 now should be 0 because we're doing the first derivative at x equals 1. So this is how this looks. We set x low to be 0 still, x high now is 1 instead of pi over 2. This didn't change, This none of this changed. Now our um, equation definition just becomes minus y of 1 here, and our boundary condition change as, as I noted before. And that's it. Um, that gives us our, our model problem solution now with a first order derivative boundary condition. So that's how you do these problems. It's pretty straightforward. Um, I encourage you, if you can get these to work, to try a nonlinear problem and see that it, it works quite well, um, although you may have to fiddle with your initial guesses a little bit. So that's it.